This is NMH at one and here are the news headlines. Education Minister not backing down amid calls for her resignation. Former Education Minister Katrina Hansi Marwa defends her appointed Swapo Politburo. MTC to build schools in three regions. Kenya pushes one pub per town in order to fight alcoholism. I am Ashwin Berry. And I am Glenn Roshipura here to bring you the latest news both local and international ranging from current affairs, community stories, sports and economic news. In today's midday news update, this year through its rural schools project, MTC plans to construct classrooms in three more regions to the value of 3.2 million Namibian dollars. Namely, the company is targeting the Zambezi region with a budget of 1 million Namibian dollars, Ohangwena with 1.25 million, and a budget of 1 million for Hardap region. Remember to engage with these stories on our social media throughout the broadcast. Visual news coming up right after the break. Active Kids is an initiative under the MyZone brand that aims to provide exciting and easy activities and fun stories. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na. Active Kids, where we actively invest in your future. Now, acting president of the Namibia National Farmers Union, Amon Mushive Kapi, says Mitko is sidelining communal farmers south and north of the cordon fence. Ilani Smith contributed this clip. Lack of consultation, that is one point that we are heading also. Not aware of its strategy. Even also the special AGM, what they are having right now, is at a very short notice and was never shared with the communal unions. Our farmers who are the members of MITCO rise concerned with the union leadership regarding the MITCO, but we are saying it is for the farmers. Uh, it targeted specific commercial MITCO paying the high prices. The trend has been going for long regarding selective engagements. That is a problem what we see that Nico is doing and we need them to change from that trend. Mitko is uh, in process of dissolving the NCA subsidiary which is the only means of to save the northern farmers. No consultation firm, but they're currently doing secretly. Education Minister Anangi Hipondoka said a person only resigns when they have failed. She said this in response to calls for her to step down following the colossal failure of NSSC learners. Let's take a look. Uh, people are unhappy about the, grade 12, the, the last examinations and they want you to step down. What are, your cons uh, what, are your, what are your responses to that? Yeah, eh. stepping down is one thing and correcting what should need to be done is another thing. I don't know what stepping down means. Does it mean you run away? Are you guilty? You know, when you are not guilty, you don't run away. Mm -hmm. When you know where the challenges are. The best way is to face the challenges and analyze them further as we have been doing and correct what we are supposed to. Not correct, but rather improve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, that, that, that's my take on that one. This we, are doing, we, are, we are doing a lot. We are taking mitigatory kind of action. 
in order to really make sure that our children are taken care of. We know what they went through. This match is really we thought the performance could have been better, but uh, looking at the, the, the past, these children have been uh, are left with scars mainly from COVID. That's why what you have done now is to say those that are younger and, and uh, 18 and below can be allowed to repeat full time. Because rewriting the examination is a very expensive thing. Our examination takes two years. It's an external examination which is which is done in collaboration with Cambridge. We will not be able to do it within two, two, two weeks. If we say we take the 2024 examination or end of 2023 examination for them now, it means we will not have an examination for them. So what we, we are doing is to really mitigate the impact through uh, trying to allow them to repeat who can who can get space and then also what we have done is through Namco we are busy allocating more funds to Namco to ensure that Namco move away from the block block uh, uh, tuition where they only go for holidays and we are saying at least do face to face they are busy they are still working out on how to do face to face either three days a week where the children are sitting with the teacher still for, the, yeah. for now, we haven't talked about the increase of the allocation to Elena because the, 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 the resources will not allow it. Uh, the, the strategies that we have uh, agreed on is to rather try by all means to do what you can with the little we have. Otherwise, we will not have resources to say now we increase. But efforts are there to be able, to be able for us to, to improve on the teaching learning environment, especially the issue of classroom sizes, the issue of teacher availability, teacher capacity, those are many of the things that we are working on immediately because now we are focusing on improving the results already come end 2023. We cannot really uh, promise that suddenly there are, there are availability of this. Yeah. Well, to an education minister who does not want to step down and to one who is a former education minister, Katrina Hansi Marwa speaks on her appointment to the Swapo Politburo after the break in the newspaper review segment. Stay with us. The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. This show is broadcasted on NTV, oneup2.com and cross-shared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. Contact evening at synergy.com.na. Evening Review, unpacking today's pertinent issues. We start our newspaper review with the Namibian Sun on the front page. The paper reports that former Education Minister Katrina Hansi Marwa, a trusted ally of President Hage Gengob, says she was appointed to the Sopo Politburo due to her experience and extensive work in the party amid claims she was planted in that structure to fight for the head of state. Gengob, who is believed to have lost much of his influence following last year's elective congress, nominated Hansi Marwa and his personal lawyer Sisa Namanje to the Politburo in December. The former Education Minister has a corruption conviction on her name from a 2019 court ruling related to the distribution of houses in the Hardab region where she was governor. Her attempt to appeal the conviction was thrown out. On page 4, the paper reports that Riobot community activist Abe Zekaibeb, who says the town CEO Simeon Kanime and some councillors are ignoring the plight of the community regarding floods. Kaibeb, during a telephone interview, claimed that the biggest problem faced by the town is that there's no storm water system. According to the council's spokesperson, Desire Tunisian, there is not much they can do at the moment, but they are working on it. In several Facebook posts, councillors Amanda Kronewald and Mara Birkas discussed the 
the severity of the flooding. In one post, Bika says it is outrageous that our residents who pay for services have to live and accept this mess year in and year out. In another post, Bika said she had begged the council to look at the affected areas in December, but nothing was done. Bika, however, refused to comment further when reached by journalists to discuss the matter. Africans daily newspaper Republican leads with Nampawa's contingencies amid the ESCOM crisis, reporting that Nampawa has started devising mitigating strategies on how to deal with power supply in the event that troubled South African utility ESCOM can no longer fulfill its contractual obligations towards Namibia. This is according to Nampawa insiders, despite the company publicly stating that load shedding is not on the cards for Namibia. Other regional power utilities such as the Zimbabwe Zimbabwe Electricity Supply Authority and Zambia Electricity Supply Corporation are also enduring hard times. But according to Nampawa, it is unlikely Namibia will face constraints with regards to its ability to supply en enough energy to all power users within the country because of the good relations that exist between the two power utilities. On page two, the paper reports that Namibia has not yet started with the administration of the fourth dose vaccine against COVID-19, or rather the second and supplementary dose of booster shot with 126 new COVID-19 cases reported in the country last week, the head of the country's COVID task force, Petronella Masambene, said the Ministry of Health and Social Services continue to follow studies in this connection abroad. Now, the Argoman Titan today leads with an article about the funding for the Africa Millimeter Telescope project that has now been approved for the end of as of the end of 2022, meaning that the first millimeter telescope could be constructed in Namibia as early as 2024. The AMT will be part of the Event Horizon Telescope, an international initiative that seeks to image and explore the immediate vicinity of a black hole. This will allow relativity to be observed and tested in an extreme environment. On its page three, the Argomana Zeitung reports about the round table that is an organization for young men between the ages of 18 and 40. This organization shapes young men into gentlemen and cultivates the highest ideals in civic traditions. Round table is passionate about serving community everywhere they go and make a difference. Round table also cares deeply about caring for the elderly. That is why they have started a new project called Wilson. So far, $23,000 Namibian dollars has been raised for the project, which is about dental care. Stay with us as we continue with the newspaper review after the break. Flex is your health and fitness show that focuses on the health of the mind, body and spirit. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na. We continue with our newspaper review, starting off with the Namibian Health Executive Director Ben Nangombe speaking at a press conference on the status of HIV AIDS in the country on Thursday said 726,000 men in the country use 45 million government issued condoms per year. This is according to the Namibian, which further reports that Nangombe said that 720,180 eligible men have an estimated requirement of 40 condoms each per year. This, he said, is based on the population of 2.6 million, of which 49% are males, translating to approximately 1.2 million males, and of this total, 57% are in the age range of 15 to 16, deemed to be the reproductive age. On to page three, despite warnings, a woman who was allegedly beaten unconscious by her boyfriend for, us, for asking him to turn down the volume of the radio once wants to withdraw the case of attempted murder against him. The 30-year-old Nelao Nkoshi was assaulted last week at Oranjemot in the Karas region when Severus Haiksuna reportedly came home past midnight and started a quarrel because she did not cook for him. Haiksuna then cooked for himself, turned the radio on and cranked up the volume when his girlfriend asked him to lower the volume. This allegedly angered him and he proceeded to assault her until she was unconscious. She was found unconscious in the streets by police officers on patrol who then opened a case of attempted murder. 
Now, according to New Era, President Hage Gengob has come out guns blazing against calls for him to cancel a controversial $650 million Namibian dollar tender awarded to Amnix Trading to supply the health ministry with clinical products. He said changes in the law prohibits him from cancelling the tender and reminded critics that the Supreme Court found the cancellation of a former bidding process to have been irrational, unfair and unlawful. Gengob yesterday said he is a champion of the rule of law and therefore has an obligation to respect the law. On page 4, the paper reports that European Union Commissioner Jutta Ulpilanian said the crucial thing for Namibia right now is to invest in teacher training, which ultimately sets the tone for the foundation of early childhood and primary education. The commissioner, alongside Gender and Education Ministry and a UNICEF delegation on Tuesday, visited an EU-funded early childhood development center, Harmony ECD Center, at the mixed informal settlement. This assessment forms part of a high-level two-day visit by two European commissioners. Now, according to Market Watch, economic agents can expect an, an interest rate hike in the coming weeks following the South African Reserve Bank's decision to raise the repo rate by 25 basis points from 7% to 7.5%. Fin 24 recently reported that South African inflation expectations rose for the next two years. Now, average inflation expectations for the year increased to 6.1% in the fourth quarter of 2022. Stay with us as we head into economic news, speaking on the signing of the accreditation master agreement between the Green Climate Fund and the Environmental Investment Fund of Namibia and more. Stay with us. Flex is your health and fitness show that focuses on the health of the mind, body and spirit. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na. The signing of the accreditation master agreement between the Green Climate Fund and the Environmental Investment Fund of Namibia commenced with the GCF program consultations in Vinduk last week. Through this project, the EIF intends to establish a sustainable financing facility that supports value chains and market penetration of agriculture production to enhance long-term adaptation capacities within peri-urban environment. The EIF said that the objective is to create a blended financing facility in the form of a green guarantee scheme under which the projects will be used to risk the EIF green credit line and attract additional investment through leveraging from the private sector and capital recycling. It was also said that urban households in Namibia are increasingly finding it difficult to generate income from subsistence agriculture. ESCOM has launched the second phase of its land lease program that aims to secure as much as 500 megawatts for the grid from independent renewable energy projects. The program involves ESCOM leasing por portions of its available land in the Mapulang to renewable energy projects. This is part of efforts to improve the availability of generation capacity as the country battles an ongoing power crisis. The land is strategically located near energy infrastructure so that projects can easily easily connect and feed power to the grid. It also eliminates the need to build new grid connections. Let's head into the economic indicators. The Namibian dollar is down next to the British pound and the US dollar up next to the euro and maintaining its, its value at 2.54 Namibian dollars next to the Chinese yuan. Selected NSX stock closing prices managed to maintain their value first round Namibia on 33.01 points. Local index closed on an uptick of 0.56% whilst the overall index followed suit with 0.44%. Looking at commodities, it's green all the way with gold on 0.09%, copper 0.32%, Brent crude oil 1.5% and zinc closed on 1.4% of an uptick. Rebels in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo claim to have taken the key town of Kichanga. These and more news from the continent on the other side of the break. Active Kids is an initiative under the MyZone brand that aims to provide exciting and easy activities and fun stories. 
If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na. Active Kids, where we actively invest in your future. Heading into news stemming from the African continent, rebels in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo claim to have taken the key town of Kichanga after three days of intense clashes with government forces. The UN-sponsored local radio, Okapi, was among the first to report the fall of Kichanga to the rebels. Images of hundreds of people fleeing the town have also been shared on social media. Local civil society groups and the UN forces in the country have condemned M23 military offensives which have forced more than 400,000 people to flee their homes. Congolese Senator Francine Moyumba has called on Parliament to hold an extraordinary session because the country is doing very badly, she said on Twitter. A summit held in November in neighboring Angola had asked the M23 rebels to cease hostilities and withdraw from areas it had captured. But the rebels said they find themselves obliged to intervene to stop another genocide against ethnic Tutsis living in DR Congo, according to a statement on Thursday evening. In our next story, Kenya's deputy president has ordered government administrations in the country's central region to enforce a one pub per town directive that was issued last week. Rigati Gashagwa also wants entertainment joints in the region to only operate between 1700 hours and 2300 hours in new measures meant to deal with alcoholism. There, the, there are fears the directives could see many resort to homemade alcohol often laced with industrial chemicals. Deaths from illicit brews have previously been reported, but Mr. Gushagawa on Thursday insisted, insisted rather that alcoholism in the region was dire and told officials not to renew pub licenses once they expire. Let's head into international news. Haitian police officers on Thursday blocked streets and forced their way into the country's main airport to protest the recent killing of officers by armed gangs, expanding their grip on the Caribbean nation. Protesters in civilian clothes who identified themselves as police first attacked Prime Minister Ariel Henry's official residence, according to a Reuters witness, and they flooded the airport as Henry was arriving from a trip to Argentina. Haitian human rights group RNDDH said in a statement that 78 police officers had been killed since Henry came into power in July 2021, averaging five each month, saying the Prime Minister and the head of the National Police, Franz Albert, were responsible for each of the 78 lives lost during their reign. History will remember they did nothing to protect and preserve the lives of these agents who chose to serve their country, it added. Stay with us as we head into local sports shortly. We are back again with another Generation episode of your favorite show. Scholars, varsity and the youth generation through Zone, Varsity and School News. If you'd like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact Zone at synergy.com.na. Let's get into our local sports news. The president of Netball Namibia, Rebecca Hohasse, says they are looking forward to fireworks this weekend at the MTC Premier League playoff taking place in Ventuk at the Wanderers Courts. There are two groups of teams. Team A consists of the Afrocat Wildcats, Wanderers, Sumep, Youngsters and Blue Waters, whereas Team B consists of the Young 11 Stars, Maria Coretti, NC Northern Flyballers and Mariental Nampol. In his quest to become a world champion, hard-hitting Philippus Energy Tumba says he does not fear anyone in his division and is determined to beat every opponent, including Mexican pugilist Luis Neri. Currently ranked number 10 by the WBO, the boxer, who was born and raised in the Ohangwena region, boasts a record of 13 fights, 12 wins, 11 from knockouts, and one loss. Speaking during an interview with Namibian Sun Sports Dex, 
desk rather, Ngitumba said that he moved to Swakopmund looking for greener pastures. It was here that he got into boxing in 2013. Ngitumba now fights out of the MTC Nesta Sunshine Tobias Boxing Academy. A team of 13 Namibian club rugby players left for Malsbury, South Africa to compete in the West Bank Spa 7S rugby tournament. It will be the second time that players from Namibia will be in action at the event. A Kudus rugby club team competed in 2020 and was stopped by Invincible in the quarterfinal round of the competition. Roses defeated St. George's in the final. This time, a team consisting of mostly Kudu players with Joshua Jacobus as captain and Percy Nash as Vice Captain have been strengthened by players from Crotfontein and Yuna. An international stories under pressure Kaiser Chiefs coach Arthur Zwane has bemoaned injuries to key players as he tries to avoid a fourth successive defeat in a row when the Amakosi welcome Royal AM to the Peter Mokoba Stadium in Polokwane on Sunday. Another defeat would equal Chiefs worst ever sequence of defeats a mark they set in April last year when they lost four games on the bounce. It is tough times at Naturena with Zwane admitting their plight has not been helped by injuries to two of their most experienced players. Manchester City boss Pep Guardiola admits he could end up in a touchline role with Arsenal manager Michael Arteta. Despite the past close friendship, Arteta worked as Guardiola's assistant at City for three years before leaving to take charge of Arsenal in 2019. The two Spaniards established a strong bond, but Guardiola knows their relationship could be frayed by the growing rivalry between their clubs. Arsenal are five points clear of City at the top of the Premier League while the teams meet in the FA Cup fourth round in Manchester on Friday. Thank you for joining us throughout this broadcast. Stay with us as we bring you the highlights after the break as well as the weekend gig guide. Klits Kompas is an African continuity program with Namibus Nis and Onarhoude. As jy jou handelsmerk of veldtog op hierdie platform wil vertoon, kontak kletsatsynergy.com.na Hello NMH at One viewers, my name is Michael Kayunde. I'm back on your TV screens to give you guys a lowdown of some of the events that are going down this weekend. To start with, you can catch that is chill sessions tonight on 19, at, at 1900 hours on Namibian Science Facebook page. That's the show where I get to take you in and around the country, showcasing you the trending music videos in the country for the week. Moving along with other events that are taking place, you can catch that as the prior champagne event taking place tonight at the loft. Tickets are 100 bucks to get you in and then you get to have the time of your life. Moving along with the, another event you can catch this weekend is the second edition of Drea Summer taking place tomorrow, that is Saturday at the catch. A lot of performances and DJs by Namibian artists, so make sure you, cho you go out there to the catch and support Dreas. He's going to be having his second edition of the Dreas Summer, a residency he's having at the catch. So those are some of the events that are taking place this weekend. From me, Michael, until next time, it's bye-bye. Let's head into the highlights. Rebels in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo claim to have taken the key town of Kichanga after three days of intense clashes with government forces. Haitian police officers on Thursday blocked streets and forced their way into the country's main airport to protest the recent killing of officers by armed gangs expanding their grip on the Caribbean nation. And the president of Netpo Namibia, Rebecca Hoahoses, says they are looking forward to fireworks this weekend at the MTC Premier League playoffs taking place in Vinduk at the Wanderers Courts. Those have been your highlights. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1 p.m. to spend your lunch hour with NMH at 1, catching up on the latest news in Namibia, Africa and the world, ranging from current affairs, economic news, sports and international headlines. I am Glenn Rashipura. And I'm Ashwin Berry. Have a wonderful weekend.